Native American Burial Ground Experience A few years back, I was dating this girl who had family friends supposedly living in a house built in proximity to a Native American burial ground. Living at the house were a husband and wife. During a particular fall night, the husband and wife arrived at our campsite we've been staying at, telling us they just had a wild experience. Due to ongoing phenomena, they had decided to try to antagonize any existing spirits and record them on a cell phone. The antagonization didn't really come up with any results, but still my girlfriend and I were intrigued. We decided that that night, we would go to the house and have a feel for it ourselves. We arrived at the house and something felt wrong instantly. My stomach sank and it became difficult to breathe as if the air was thick and would not pass through my lungs. We approached the door, but the darkness inside through the front window was thick and menacing. My girlfriend lost her nerve and ran back to the car and I followed close behind. We got back in the car, but the atmosphere felt strange. I had her drop me off at my parents' house, where to my dismay I was the last one still awake. I entered the quiet house, hesitant to pick my head up for the fear of seeing any figures. I had the cold feeling that I was no longer alone. I felt watched. I felt hunted. I stormed upstairs as fast as I could and buried myself in the safety of my sheets, but the gnawing feeling of another presence wouldn't let me rest. For approximately 45 minutes, I laid awake, shaking, unable to gain composure. Finally. It reached a point to where I, I had exhausted my own body and I was able to close my eyes and drift off. Not two minutes after I had fallen asleep, I awoke to a loud, thundering crash. Something large had been thrust against my bedroom door. When I got up and opened the door, I found the large oak hallway table we had on our upstairs landing moved directly in the doorway. I had to push it back to even open the entire door. The table was once a dining room table, now condensed to a storage spot for holiday decorations. The decorations had been strewn all over the staircase. My mother emerged from her room and asked me what the fuck I was doing. In a panic, I began to cry and told her the entire story. To this day, I vowed I would never venture back to that place. I basically antagonized a spirit at an Indian burial ground. It followed me home and fucked up my shit, never going back. Nope. 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 Indian Burial Mounds and Haunted Nursing Homes so I used to work at a nursing home that was quite literally built just up the hill from a Native American burial mound. True story. The mound is in Wakanda Park in Wisconsin for any disbelievers. Anyways, this place had so much activity that I was beginning to wonder if I was losing my mind. Multiple people have witnessed shadow figures moving through the halls, I personally witnessed one fall from a dark corner in a patient's room and into the floor. It scared the hell out of me because this patient was an extreme fall risk. And another time, I was in the back hallway of the building, the very same hallway we moved the recently deceased out through, and also where we temporarily store their belongings. Anyways, I was in the hallway and ducked because... I saw something fly at me, only there was nothing and no one there. The strangest thing that happened to me was on the day I handed in my form to resign from the job. I was in the office talking to my manager, and across the hall was an empty office that belonged to the social worker. As we were finishing up, a glass vase shattered 
in the social worker's office doorway. Upon asking the social worker where the vase was before it broke, she stated that it was on the top shelf in her office, on the opposite side of the room from the door. Now, it's one thing for a vase to miraculously lose balance on its own and shatter. It's quite another for it to seemingly fly 10 or so feet horizontally and then smash in an open doorway in an empty office. It would have had to be thrown for it to have landed this way. And the spray pattern of the glass blew into the hallway towards, towards my manager's office. I get the feeling that something or someone didn't want me to leave. Haven't been back since. Indian Burial Ground Haunted House Hi everyone. This is a true story. It happened when I was very young. But it really did happen. Thank you once again for reading. And if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the comments and I will try my best to answer them. The story starts out like this. I was a small child at the time, only about five. And the other person in this event is my brother. He was about 16 at the time. My family had bought our first house in Bartlett, Illinois, and we were very excited to move in. The previous owner had all the windows covered with blankets, and he never seemed to come out of the house. But we still thought nothing of it. And we moved in. For the first few months, nothing really happened, and we were all really happy to be in the house. Of course, Things got worse. After a while, in my room, which I shared with my brother on bunk beds, my brother and I could hear noises at night coming from the basement. And for a while, we thought nothing of it and just blocked it out of our minds. Then the noises turned into voices after a few weeks, and there were two, one of a small child or a baby crying, and another of a man, a man in his about his 40s, laughing manically and yelling at the baby to be quiet. Now of course, our parents didn't believe us and told us we were just watching too much TV. And my older sister, who was 18 at the time, told us the same thing until, until she started to hear it too. First she came into our room and told us to stop making noises. And we told her we weren't, and she said, Yeah, right, just stop it, okay? Then about a week later, she heard the voices again, and she heard sounds on someone walking up our basement stairs. Now she freaked out and got mad at us, and opened the door, but no one was there. She went into our room, and saw that me and my brother were both there. She got really scared, and stayed in our room that night. About a month later, my dad was at work, my mom was out running errands, and my sister who could now drive were out with her friends. So my brother had to watch me in our house. Now, up until this time, we only heard the voices at night at around 2 to 3 a.m. It was about noon, and we were in the TV room, and we heard the man and the baby from upstairs in the basement. Finally, my brother got fed up and tried to go yell at the spirit to tell it to stop bothering us and to tell it to leave. This apparently made it angry because he heard me start crying from downstairs like something was trying to hurt me. And he ran upstairs and found me crying on the couch. At this point, he was scared and angry at the same time. And when he started saying again for the thing to leave, he heard the laughing downstairs again. So he took me by the hand this time and went downstairs again. 
We were at the bottom of the stairs when we heard from downstairs our kitchen cabinets creak open and the plates start dropping from them. We freaked out and ran to our neighbor's house until my mom got home. We told her the story and she got mad at us and said, we broke the plates just for the story. My dad basically said the same thing when he got home. Three months later, my parents got a divorce and we moved out of the house with my mother. We later learned that the house was built on an ancient Indian burial ground. And we also learned that after we left, the garage burned down for some mysterious reason. But once in a while, I will drive by there. And I still get the ominous feeling like there is something in there. And I drive away a little faster. <laughs>